Well, hello again. Here's another good one for the uh, yes or no treatment, and it's this one. Would independence be good for Scotland? Well, here we go again with Scottish independence. It's a bit of background. Here's the recent history. Uh, a referendum in uh, 1997, that resulted in the Scottish Parliament being established. And so uh, devolution was seen as the first step. And then they had an independence referendum about seven years ago, 2014. And they voted 55 to 45 to stay in the Union. But hmm, since then, the uh, UK has left the EU, despite the fact that Scotland wanted to remain. So. The Scottish nationalists, you know, therefore, they're hoping for a second referendum. Well, with all that, a key question as to whether Boris's uh, conservative, conservative government in Westminster is going to block the request for a second independence referendum, which they can do. And, of course, that would probably lead to a, a court fight and all of that sort of thing. Okay, so so what... What do the advocates of independence say in their claim that it would be good for Scotland? Well, they say that Scotland would prosper as an independent nation. It has competitive strength in a number of important industry. It's, uh, in particular, it's a world leader in renewable technology. It has considerable resources and know-how in uh, tidal, wind, and wave energy. And they're, they're certainly industries of the future. It has uh, leadership positions in a number of other industries like uh, life sciences, uh, biomedical products, uh, research and development in those areas, electronics, textile design, even whiskey and the gaming industry. Uh, it has uh, fine universities, a highly educated populace, higher proportion with university degrees than in England, much higher than in the European Union overall. So overall, it's uh, intellectual resources, it's a uh, degree of uh, educated people, and it's a considerable advantage and a considerable strength. And it is also a leading financial center, uh, second only to Britain and London. That's mostly in Edinburgh. So all in all, uh, Scotland has the industrial, uh, intellectual strength to prosper as a nation, either as an independent nation or as uh, part of the EU. So the future is bright uh, and it would do well and it's a good idea. Well, those who would say, no, it would not, it's not a good idea, what do they say? Well, first of all, it would not do well from an industrial standpoint, they say. For many years, its thirst for independence was based really on North Sea oil revenues, which are, which are way down now. And uh, as a consequence of that, as well as some other things, a number of economic models produced by reputable think tanks and organizations, they predict the income per capita after leaving the UK and as a consequence of Brexit would reduce income in Scotland far more than, than in the UK overall. It, it would be a tough time for, for the Scots. And as a related matter, the public finances are really in bad shape. Its deficit is now huge on the order of 25% of national income. As, it, as an independent nation, in order to restore its finances, it would have to require huge tax increases, cuts in public spending, a prospect that clearly would be unacceptable to its population. It would be just a mess. And the question of what currency to use as an independent nation, that's a difficult one too. Britain wouldn't allow its use of the pound sterling. Uh, the EU, uh, it seems, has made it clear that, that uh, it's not eligible at the moment to adopt the euro. So uh, what are they going to do? They have to create their own currency, a task of enormous complexity, managerial burden, and so forth. Uh, it, it would be just awful. Well, uh, as a consequence of all that, what's, what's my take? Well, my take is it's a bad idea for three reasons. Okay, number one, uh, <laughs> there's a fundamental process problem when considering any kind of secession step for any group or country. Uh, uh, it's just that the decision to, to go ahead must be taken before any terms are negotiated. Uh, yeah, that's a real problem. It's a kind of a half-blind effort. Uh, 
the process, it's bedeviled by just sheer complexity of making the changes, as we're finding out in Brexit. Quite apart from the difficulty in negotiating terms, and we've seen that in Brexit, which seems to go on forever, in recent years, there are many secession movements in Europe, among them the Catalans and Basques in Spain, the Britons in France, the, the Bavarians in Germany, the Northern Italians in Italy, and so forth. None of them have succeeded, probably for these very reasons. It's an almost impossible thing to, to bring off satisfactorily. Number two, the question of whether the referendum would even be allowed by the Parliament in Westminster. Uh, it, it seems very unlikely, and a, and a negative, dis and as it has declined in the past, and a negative uh, decision would probably result in just interminable uh, legal contention. And uh, number three, <laughs> uh, I, I have to say there's substantial doubt that its industrial and financial prospect as an independent nation would be a happy one. They, they, so the obstacles are so huge that whether or not it's a good idea is almost academic, as it's almost impossible to bring off. It, it's just simply a bad idea. Sorry, that's the way I come out. <laughs> some of you will agree, some of you won't, but if you do, uh, give me a like, uh, subscribe, uh, comment, notify, all of that sort of thing, and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.